And we are back to another Boss Bus Between the Cheeks Bonanza Fiasco Extreme with two <laughs> special guests tonight. We have the special co-host, Patrick, over here, what up? Uh, subbing in for Paul. And we have the one, the only, Echoes Down, or as you may know him, Mason Heller. That's me. <laughs> how you doing, man? Good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, pretty good. Peachy. Peachy. <laughs> I was I expected to be between the cheeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. We were, uh, Paul's out of town, so I was j literally just going to be me, and it would just be one cheek, and you'd just be like... Yeah, that'd be it wrong. Doesn't, it doesn't feel the same. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You know, Patrick came in clutch. <laughs> I have participated as a cheek quite a few times. True. <laughs> like the cheek the, che the yep. cheek amputee. You, yeah, you have the, you have the, the experience as a cheek. The I prosthetic do. cheek. Dude. So how how have you been? What have you been up to? And also, who are you for the people? So, I guess I'll start with the who am I. Perfect. So I'm Mason, or Echoes Down. That's my music name. I do electronic music. Should I talk to you or to the camera? Also, I don't know whatever you want. Yeah. Well, I just make electronic music, mostly future bassy stuff. But I've been going into like dubstep, trap, that kind of heavier stuff because that's just kind of what the scene here likes a lot. Oh yeah. True. Yeah. Um, I took a little break from that, did some other fun creative stuff, because I was a little burnt out of it, honestly. So I also <clears throat> did some acting and did some movie stuff for a little bit, did some other film nonsense that we can Fuck maybe yes. talk about later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, coming back into music. And I'm excited because everything's opening up now. We can have like shows and stuff and Finally. go to shows. It's going to be so much fun. Plus, Dude. everybody is so ready. Everybody That's what I'm saying, just, right? Like, on that, like, Geared up. Like, you know, just like a ecstasy just from the idea of getting to go back to events regularly and festivals being back open. And, like, mm -hmm. not only that, it's like, even though it's really hot, like, the weather's nice finally enough for everybody to be outside doing things. So yep. It's perfect. It's the, the perfect storm. Exactly. Everything's going good. And hopefully we have, like, a good wave, like, coming in of fun concerts and stuff. I haven't really I, seen a whole lot. Honestly. I would imagine that there's a lot of stuff in the works. I've seen a few at least coming, like, you know, between here and Kansas City. You know, mm -hmm. I promote for high tech, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and just a lot of the things that they had planned are still going forward, and now they're, like, you know, just kind of waiting to to unveil things because they do them in, like, sessions of two, you know, like, two yeah. a week instead of just dropping, like, 50 shows. <laughs> Here's yeah. every show. Which is, yeah. like, fair. I get it. Because you want to, like, build hype around, like, specific shows and stuff. Oh, yeah. You don't want to drop it all at once. Yeah. True. True. Dude, um, first of all, it's great to see you. It's been a long time. It's great to see um, you too. <laughs> thank you, thank you again for hosting Boss Bus at that Cosmic Rave. That was yeah. so fun. Yeah, I'm glad you guys. That was a good time. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's something else I want to do. I want to host more shows because I think hosting shows is really fun. <laughs> yeah, are are you One Note Entertainment or is that you and Devin Dupree? That's just Devin. Oh, that's I just, just Devin. help him with certain like shows that he wants me to. So mm -hmm. I like handle lots of the electronic music stuff. Gotcha. While he Hell, does yeah. like hip hop and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Just so you do contacts for like artists and then some of the set setups and you know coordinate who's bringing what and things like yeah. that. That makes sense. That's cool though. But it's good that we have like Devin because he just knows people with you know good lighting setups, good speakers and everything. So oh, we can always nice. throw like a nice show wherever. Cool. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That's sick, man. Um, um I for one want to know um you so you've been doing as you said you've been doing a few films and you've been in a few films which yeah. I've I've seen your announcements when you like finally did announce the that movie that you were in I can't think of the name but it's the one with the cool ass there's like killer. a house killer yeah. yeah so what 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 got you into that I you know I was like one of those drama kids at first too like in middle school I did mm -hmm. jazz band and I did drama so I'd always do like the plays and I always thought it was just fun mm -hmm. and I realized that my goal that year was just like I want to be in a movie I don't know why I just want to like to have that like fun experience yeah. and I'd done acting a little bit before short films and stuff like that but I went through an app called Backstage which is like an actor's kind of contact list people mm -hmm. post like listings and you can apply for it oh shit uh I applied for a bunch and that one specifically I finally <laughs> got like an audition call back and it was during like the beginning of quarantine mm -hmm. so we did it all over zoom I auditioned he was like oh yeah you're awesome I was like thanks Hell but the yeah. funny thing about that was that I don't know how much I can like talk about the movie mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. I don't like we signed contracts and stuff so yeah like, yeah I, don't no, know that I, can talk, I can talk about like the experience I'm sure yeah but like um <laughs> the first thing that he asked me it was like are you comfortable being racist and I was like <laughs> 
I don't know how to answer that question. Because <laughs> do I say yes? Because that makes me seem like an awful person. Or do I say no and then not get the job? So I was like... <laughs> Like yeah, I guess. Like, uh, yeah. Like, it's like, it's like I hesitantly say yes, but can you maybe explain? Further, yeah. You know, it was like no, it's not like yeah. that. I was like yeah, I know, it's just yeah. a total awkward situation. Right. Because apparently, like, spoilers, I guess not really, but like I have like this subtle racism about me, I guess mm-hmm. that was that we wrote into like the script. I don't want to like spoil yeah. too much, whatever. Right. But we got. All the actors and everything together. I was the only one actually from out of town, except for one other girl. She was from New York. Oh, shit. Uh, and we shot in Memphis. And it was really cool because they flew us all out after we had our Zoom rehearsals. And everyone was so nice. Like, it was such a good experience. We shot for just a week. Um, it was probably the hardest I've ever worked in my life. I got up at, like, 6 a.m. And then we worked till, like, 9 or 10 p.m. And we just did that, like, every day. Holy shit. Yeah, but it was, like, fun work, you know? Like, yeah. it didn't feel like work. We would, like, go and just do our whole thing that we'd practice for months. And it was awesome. You'd just be tired, though. You'd just get to the yeah. end and just like, oh. Yeah, we, I would just pass out going home. And I was in an yeah. Airbnb with uh, another actor and the director of photography. So we would all, like, us three would go get dinner together, and then we would just pass out, and it was yeah. awesome. Yeah, 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 Super fun experience, though. Like, yeah, it how come... was Memphis? Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It was cool because, yeah. like, we had locals there, or, like, I was working with locals there, so oh, they would just, sick. like, take me around to all the cool little spots, because oh, <laughs> that's, that's cool. what I wanted to experience. That's mm-hmm. always the best. Mm-hmm. So it was super fun. Uh I think what made the whole, like, process of making a movie really Mm -hmm. easy was that we all kind of had a positive attitude, and I feel like sometimes in big group projects like that, there's people that are, like, trying to be too controlling and stuff like Mm -hmm. that, but it wasn't at all like that, luckily. All the actors, we got along super well, the director was forward, and we just listened to him, we did whatever he said, whatever he needed, and Mm -hmm. it flew by, and it was, again, just awesome. Yeah, that's cool that's that you like got to do that all, get that whole experience all at once, and then like not have any like kinks in the program, or oh, like yeah. everything went super <coughs> smooth, and you weren't having like holdups or like you know technical issues. It was yeah. just like everything went, you know, in a way that was easier for you to like grasp in like a learning experience. So yeah, and it was like super eye opening in the way of like a learning experience. Like I got to learn so much because <laughs> I'm going to California to do some film stuff, you know. So Ooh, that's awesome. also future stuff. Ooh. But that like whole process was like oh this is how you make a movie or at least yeah. like a low budget independent and that film. resume piece itself too is just oh yeah always yeah. you know i just hope top. i did well yeah. <laughs> like i was super nervous for it to come out because i get like really self-critical about myself and oh, it's like yeah oh when i see myself up there i'm gonna be like did i do that right did it yeah. look right i'm gonna be looking at everyone i'm not even gonna be watching the movie <laughs> it's gonna be so bad <laughs> like i think i did good he i think People usually tell you if you don't, or they don't hire you. You know, like yeah, I got that true. really bad, like or make you redo center. it, or you know, things yeah. like that. But again, super awesome experience, super great learning experience, and again, Absolutely. met so many awesome people. Fuck yeah! And well, congratulations just, again. Yeah, yeah. thank yeah. you. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. And I got back from California doing another one just recently that I didn't really talk about because I didn't know if I could talk about it. True, it was a small right? role though. That's still sick though, dude. Going yeah. to Cali for that? Yeah, it was super fun. Or wow. Did, can you say where you went in Cali? Uh, just Los Angeles, like Burbank area. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. And my girlfriend wasn't very happy about it, though, because I have to have a sex scene in it. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. And that was like the first thing I told her. She was like, oh, that's cool. I was like, I don't have to do it. <laughs> she was like, no, you need to do it. <laughs> I was like, are you going to be cool with it? Yeah. Like, is this we have, have like a whole sit down discussion. And it's like, I totally get it. Because like, yeah. you know. It's like, like you know, uh, put put yourself in her shoes, and you're like, eh. yeah, like I, I mean, like yes, I want you to do it because it's important for your career, but yeah, yeah, it's the first time uncomfortable thing for sure. Right. And she was like, I'm not gonna go see that one. I was like, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was also just a, a surprisingly comfortable experience because everyone was like very professional and stuff until they handed me the cock sock. Which was mm. the most ridiculous. That's what it's called. Yeah. They literally handed me this thing in a plastic bag. They're like, "Here, you need to put that on." And it was like, like a crown royal bag for your junk. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> I had to just tie it around and walk around in a robe. It was awful. <laughs> That's all that's that good. An that's experience. Very, very unique experience all on its own. Oh yeah, yeah. But I'm all about that. I'm like, if it's weird and inexperienced, I'm totally about yeah. doing it. <laughs> it's Absolutely. fun. 
Yeah. Wow. Dude, that's insane. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah. <laughs> I've been walking oh around with God. a cock sock and that's being racist, life. I guess. Yep. <laughs> being racist to the cock sock. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's Amen. A, what that's a, a life. repertoire you've been, you've been faced with. Yeah. <laughs> recent. That's what I'm saying. What about you guys? What have you been up to? Just been stock brokering. Uh, I started Ooh. streaming on Twitch. I so, watch. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was uh, that made me so excited, mm -hmm. but I got mm -hmm. a whole streaming room set up today, so it's gonna be high quality. I just need a mic stand for this, but yeah, chilling. I need. Uh, I've kind of lost motivation at like, I've lost some motivation to make music uh, without Drew or Reese here, because mm. like, I work better with others. But I agree. Trying to do that, DJ. Just mm -hmm. Keep reaching out to people too. Yeah. True. True. People, what do, what do people in town love working together? It's, yeah. it's, our community is so tight in that way, where everybody's like, if you hit someone, I'd be like, hey, do you want to make a song? They'll be like, send me files, and I'm on it. Right. Like, True. <laughs> True. See, I have a thing called anxiety. <laughs> where, like, I want to plan. I plan to do the things, but then when it comes time, I'm like, mm, just do it. Just do it. Just, you know, take that dive, man. True. It's I mean, that's, it. that's... It'll be worth it, because the worst thing that can happen is they say no. Like, and, I mean, yeah. true. And there's a not you know not anything against our scene. We just have a lot of artists right now. Oh know? yeah, we do. So we do. It's not like if one person says no that you don't have you know twenty other people that you could ask mm -hmm. between here and Lincoln, forty. You know? See, right. people reached out to me and I was like, yeah, um, I'm super down. And then I just never made plans. <laughs> that's that's my <laughs> issue. It's more so that gotta do it. Mm -hmm. I know. But that's why I love the podcast because I get to talk to people. I haven't talked too much. Mm -hmm. I you you're such a cool person, dude. You're you're so oh, dude. kind. That's I'd say I, you're so wholesome. <laughs> Thank you, dude. I, I'm about to blood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cry. It's true. The podcasts true. have always been fun whenever I got to do them because you know just mm -hmm. hearing about these people that I watch perform or you know know yeah. them just like a party level like we're interacting at a show and you know have you know more shorthand conversations sitting down and hearing about like. Not even just what they've been up to, but where they're from, like, you know, what they come from, that kind of stuff. Like, it's really a uh, feeling of the person that I see on stage, like, and it's cool getting to go back and see them perform repeatedly, like, knowing, mm. like, oh, yeah, I actually know that person, Yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. One yeah. problem, though, I feel like that really sucks is that we're just in the middle of the country, you know? And I think it's really hard for artists to, like, grow, <clears throat> if that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, that's yeah. true. Because I think we have so much talent here. Yeah. And it's really, it's... J there's you know a couple places pretty close it's just mm -hmm. being able to establish yourself in a way like where you know one producer or like production company or something like that where there's one person where you can get that in in like Colorado or Kansas City or yeah. uh, even like some of the like Des Moines there's a lot of really big venues and stuff like we just in Omaha specifically we don't have enough venues like if we had yeah. one good venue besides like just having to go to the whole like sports stadium like mm -hmm. it would make it so much easier because even in kansas city you got uptown you have uh what uh, what's the other one i can't think of it why the midland the, yeah yeah mm -hmm. the midland um and then colorado you have a bazillion yeah <laughs> so i was gonna try to name some but it just doesn't Dude, even fucking matter. red rocks somewhere. that's yeah. like enough yeah. for the whole state and there's right. a million so more dope. yeah mm -hmm. but yeah no really it's just it sucks that we don't have enough of, you know, a placement to be able to actually, you know, mm -hmm. uh, showcase the people that have the talent here. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we have a community and we have oh. talented people. It's just it's hard to expand like that, I mm -hmm. feel, you know, yeah. at least in the Midwest, because like, going to L.A. or whatever being there it was so much different because everyone's just doing something and they're just like all crazy and people are showing up and it, it's a whole different level of stuff out there but it's like it is so much easier to grow in a place like that mm -hmm. whereas you have here that has like a really small but dedicated community mm -hmm. but it's just hard to get out of that and like expand yeah. yourself yeah absolutely. i agree mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think it's a, a big word in the whole uh industry of music movies all this pace like our yeah. state is such a slow pace comparatively to where all of the big things are going like california texas new york like Everybody there, they move at like ten times the pace that we all do. And when we people go here, like vacation there, they, no one can keep up. And that's why it's like cool. Like I've had people take me to places like even Colorado, like yeah. that have lived there before, and their pace is at least twice to you know three times as fast as we are here. And it's like it's only a six hour drive away. Like that's not like it's a huge distance. It's just here in Nebraska, it's very old school. Like everybody just is taking their time. They don't care to move fast because yeah. most of the money here is already established. You know. Mm -hmm. It's I hard for Pete Ricketts. 
And Pete Rick. Well, honestly, <laughs> blame Pete Rick. He, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say I blame him fully, but he definitely contributes to the issue. Dude, mm-hmm. We just sit back and eat runzas all day and watch Pete Rick. I mean, Gene Stothert contributes just as much because, she, like, you know, them cooperate, <laughs> corroborating together in Omaha just completely, like, has mm-hmm. this, like, slow yeah. motion walking through. Because, like, why would they want to speed everything up? The way it is right now, they make so much money that oh, their, like, ears are bleeding. Yeah. Like, That's ridiculous. We're going to have casinos, though. That's going to be cool. Yeah. And it's they're going to have them inside of the horse tracks, too. Yeah. Gambling. Let's go. <laughs> I'm here for it. Dude. <laughs> well, Finally. pump some money into the, you know, that isn't going to just go to police and, you know, things that most people that actually need the money don't see. Like, I'm all for it. Like, you mm-hmm. know, casinos are end up paying those taxes. And if that taxes can get rerouted to, you know, you know, social services and those kind of systems, like... Go yeah. for it. Like, I don't care. People with gambling problems already exist and they're doing it on their phones right now and giving it to people, you know, overseas. So yeah. right. give them somewhere at home where they can go out and do it, you know? Exactly. True. So they're just going to go to Iowa and do it anyways. True. And like literally right there. It's like yeah. a 20 minute drive. They On, on purpose. They <laughs> they're were like, playing we're themselves out of so much money when literally people can drive 20 minutes into Iowa <laughs> yeah, right. and then just go to three other casinos. <laughs> There's a casino like right on the border. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like here it is. And they're not even far away from each other. Like you can oh. get from Horseshoe to Maristar in like less than five minutes. Like yep. they're not arrows. even. Yeah. yeah. They're all right there. It's like there. five minutes and five minutes and five minutes. <laughs> like, yep. I like, how we, like how we got on the topic of like politics and the economy. Just that. <laughs> like, yeah, so here's all the social world problems that we're gonna fix. We're gonna yep. do it. But you know, I think it's important to talk about that stuff. You know, yeah. yeah. Fuck Pete Ricketts. That's yeah. all I got. All my homies, <laughs> all my homies hate Pete Ricketts. He eats crickets. He does. He eats crickets, and he's bald, and he eats. <laughs> he's bald. That's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <That's a. laughs> yeah, yeah, shit. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> no, shit. But, um, um, Omaha's a weird place in that sense, you know? It yeah. feels There's such, like, a distinct divide in so many different ways. Yeah. And it really sucks. Well, our zoning, our zoning is so, like, the redlining is just mm-hmm. so bad in Omaha. Like, yeah. even though we're not even, like, our crime per capita is really bad, obviously, in Omaha. But, mm-hmm. like, still the fact that we are in such a middle, like, where there's so many different groups. Like, there's so many, there's not, like one really predominant race i don't think in omaha because there's so many different ethnic groups like that have like you know everybody comes to omaha Mm -hmm. and we have like small populations of all these different people that come from all over the place yeah so it ends up just being everybody is getting put in these tiny little squares and nobody's doing anything about it like it just keeps getting worse and i'm like yeah wait Mm. why are they doing this (laughs) it's rickett's master plan yeah well it's good backtracking from you know when they were like you know interchanging the schools and stuff like it's going reverse from what it was before like Mm -hmm. they were more white kids in you know uh inner city schools and more you know uh minority kids going to like nicer schools like in Mm. the 90s after they were making everybody do that than there are right now just based off of affordance of areas yeah which it's not, it's not good. Shit. It ain't good. No, it's I'll, not. I'll agree with that. Well, well, that was riveting, boys. Um, that, <laughs> was, <laughs> that was good shit. That was good shit. I like that I mean, a lot. You know. It's important. Just um, going with the flow. Yeah, exactly. It's good to talk about these things, too. It is. You know? It's important. Um, wow. Um, well, on that <laughs> note, um, you've also been making short films for a while now, right? Is that correct? A little bit, yeah. A little bit? A little bit here and there. I shoot little music videos a lot now, too. Oh, shit. Yeah, for, like, some hip-hop artists and stuff. Nice. How's that? It's fun. How's that experience? Do you, in, do you like, edit it, too? Or? Mm-hmm. It's, it's nice because it feels, like, very free form, like, at least with the people that I've worked with, because mm-hmm. they'll send me a location, they'll be like, okay, this is where we're shooting, just bring your stuff, and I'm like, okay. And then we go, and we just kind of shoot a base little concept there's no real planning mm-hmm. at the moment at least we shoot for like an hour or two and then i go home and then i edit it and it's super relaxed the guys are all super chill with it you know and from what i understand they like what i do so fuck yeah yeah but um i don't know if i can announce this either or whatever but do you know uh sozin daniel yeah, yeah. yes i do uh, we're planning on shooting a music video together. Oh, like, fuck yeah. And I like it because he has, like, a whole concept idea. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to, like, spoil anything yeah, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if you need to turn your computer yeah. on. Either. Okay. I probably will. Out of... <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Um, oh. I got these long arms. Oh. Yeah, it's still going. Oh, them. my. I just... The unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. 
But, oh, I love Sozin, and I love his hyper-pop tracks that he's been putting out. I've actually been in a video that he recorded before. Oh, really? For, for uh, Nerd, for Kid Corduroy. Oh, I got you. So I... it was one of the first ones he did a while back. It was a couple years ago. I remember, I remember seeing you in that yeah, video. It was actually on the roof of Karma, was most of the video. So <laughs> That's awesome. It was crazy, because actually, we were doing a scene where we were holding someone, like, a corpse, and we were, like, pretending to, like, he, I think it was, uh, I forget who it was, even. Um, we were pretending to, like... <laughs> Is it a real know, person? Yeah, like, <laughs> like joking like, around, like for the video, like you know, yeah. like just like swinging them by his arms and legs, like holding them tight, but like yeah. and not swinging them far. But like, there's people in these apartments right above Karma, <laughs> like seeing us doing this. So the next thing you know, we're getting done recording, we're going down back into Karma, and we just hear knock at the door, and there's like four police or there was two police officers down at the door. Oh my god! And then we're like, oh my god! And they're like, hey, we we saw we got a call about someone trying to dump a body off of a roof here or something like <laughs> that was like something crazy like that. Where we all just start cracking up, like, whoa, 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 we have footage, we can show you. Yeah. And then it was crazy that they, you know, like never knew that you have to call into them if you're doing something like that, like where you might have, you know, abstract calls, just be like, hey, we're shooting a video here, so you know, so if you get a weird call that, yeah. you know, that's why, like, <laughs> that's, that's so how, funny. It was the most hilarious conversation I've ever had with a police officer. <laughs> just dumping a body. Dumping a body off of a roof. Yep. Just yeah. like a street. Yep. Swinging a car off, all the, off of the roof of car. <laughs> yes. Dude, karma, karma feels like it wasn't real. Like it feels like a fever dream. It was great. I loved it, but like it, was, it does feel like a fever dream. Yeah, it was so so hype, but it felt so short lived. Like mm -hmm. it, it could have, it had so much potential. It was it fun. I remember was playing fun. shows there. There was a blast. Dude, was, I I had a great time there. It was um, it was when <clears throat> Reese and I were starting to go to Karma. Didn't start DJing yet, mm -hmm. but it was you and I think you were on stage with someone else. Oh, Charizard. Was yes. that who it was? I think I th probably yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, you guys were playing, and Reese and I were like, there's no, like, this is insane. Like, their their transitions are perfect. They're playing, it's all perfect. Like, how the fuck do they do this physically? Like, <laughs> I'm glad you thought that. <laughs> yeah. No, Reese, Reese and I were, con like, contemplated that for a while. And mm. then eventually we were like, hey, let's DJ. Then now here let's you are. Hey. And you know how to DJ. How do you feel about your yep. own DJ skills? Now that you've done it for I'm, a while. I'd say I'm good at everything except for, or I'm proficient in everything except for dropping multiple tracks at the same time. Like doing a double in oh, rhythm yeah, or yeah. like anything like that. I oh, just like syncing two songs together to play them at the same time so you have two songs going at the same well, time. Well, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. That That's, is really hard. There's yeah. people like GTA that are just like insane at that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mixing like four different tracks. Or together. like in and out all four, then Dude. just slam all four at once. And you're like, well, how did you know that, that all of these were going to meet right at this time for each one? Like, Dude, yeah, yeah they, they're they fucking calculus. <laughs> I don't know. But there's a dude named Cod Dubs. Mm -hmm. And that's like his whole, he just fucking sits there chopping the entire time. But he just like has doubles and triples and just like is so confident about it. He'll have one up and mm -hmm. then go like this and like flick the other two in like a... Fucking <laughs> dancey way, like it's insane. Or he just um, like leaves this one and just starts banging the other. Yeah, he's two. just like That's voot, so tight. Voot, 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 voot. like, but he's going to dance fest, so wow. nice. Well, yeah, that comes by right. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good shit. It's gonna be fun. But I feel okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting better at CDJs, which is yeah. like, you have to know CDJs to play at anything big. Yeah, at all, I'd say. Mm -hmm. but, I'd say, and I think that's a like, from my understanding of like promoting for. A production company where they do a lot of really big shows like that that's a big thing that they ask a lot of the artists that they ask them is like how how proficient are you on cdjs because mm -hmm. like if you can play your tracks great on you know your uh, controller just, yeah but yeah that's it's awesome but like if, yeah. you, if you go up and you're going to be like slipping on a couple like before a big show like want to make sure that you're just going to be like at least like clean with everything it doesn't have to yeah. be perfect but just like we're not like accidentally full slipping or pressing the wrong like you know one of the the sync button oh. on Oh, it hurts it gives my me soul. Anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's the thing. I don't know a lot about, about CDJs at all, but I was with Zach the first time he was getting, like, you know, a couple instructions on it with, I think it was with Caleb. Uh, Caleb. Yep, yeah. His house. And he's like, never touch this button. And I was like, I will never forget that. He's just like, the, everything else you can just do with your, you know, with all of your, you know, your levels and everything, you do yeah. not need to touch that. He's like, syncing is so much easier if you just do it manually. He's like, yeah. don't. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> don't do it. Dude, there was one time that we were playing at the cube, and you were playing too, and like only one of the decks was working. Oh, so yeah. you managed you managed to, like, electronically flip between decks like one and three, but using just one deck, and you somehow managed to do it. I don't know. How I don't the fuck. You did it. I don't remember either. But Dude. I remember that like scenario, and it was like, that was so terrifying. That's like my worst fear. Mm -hmm. It's like playing up there because.
It's different from like a live instrument where it's like a very human mistake. Like you're playing guitar, you're playing drums, and you just kind of mess it up. Yeah. It's like it feels so out of your control. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh god. <laughs> well, I feel like digital, like you know, clips, like where you mess up a tiny bit. Like you have more of a range on like a live performance where you mm -hmm. can like catch yourself back up and make it sound good. Where someone won't, unless they're really really fluent in live music, mm -hmm. they only like the diehards are gonna catch it. Like yeah. EDM, like if you slip a, like you know a little bit more than a tiny bit, like everybody's gonna hear it just because it like you if you throw your like balance off or you do something like yeah. it's pretty yeah. obvious on or you, your setup you know or mm -hmm. you forget to turn on the bass like you're about to you <laughs> drop something yeah, and you, then just, you, you just slip the yeah. knob yeah and you're like uh um, there's no bass i'm gonna bring it in now here's the fun guys you're just sitting there like waiting like going with the <laughs> song still and then just turn it up like <laughs> the next drop you're like Ugh. Yeah, that's happened and it's like that that moment like teaches you just like Man, I really don't need to push all the things. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah. Like sometimes when I'm like not feeling confident at first, because I don't know about you, but I get like super bad stage fright. Oh yeah, and like pre-show jitters. Yeah. So like I'll start oh, the yeah. show and I'm like, all right, guys, and I like will just stand there and look down at the board or whatever and <laughs> totally pretend like I'm doing anything, not actually doing anything. Yep. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm twisting knobs. They don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yep. You can just really just be like poking at the board. Nobody's really gonna know. You just gotta be like touching oh, yeah. things strategically. Dude, like, exactly. <laughs> but wow. then. You like get into your flow, yeah, and it feels so much better. I love playing live shows. It's yeah. such a good feeling. Well, I mean, dude. like that's what's cool. I feel like a lot of my friends that I've met that have stage fright, like a big part of this, their stage fright is acceptance. Like they're worried yeah. that they're not going to like what's going on. But when this crowd starts really cheering for them, I like especially Zach too. Like once he sees everybody so hype for him, literally immediately yeah. just starts killing it. Like where it's just like not even an issue anymore. Yeah, it's just like the inspiration is there because that's like you know, why you can work past it in the first place. Yeah, three mm -hmm. songs in, I'm good. But I I, uh, I closed the show for Midnight Tea, Midnight Tyrannosaurus, when he came into town yeah. a few weeks ago. And I was after him. So the headliner played, and then I was the fucking after party. <laughs> and he is <laughs> You've heard him, right? Yeah. yeah. It's so heavy. He was yeah. just slamming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I... That was the worst pre-show jitters. I was literally walking on stage, getting everything set up, and I, like, could not think. I was sitting there, like... I, yep. I literally it was so intense I literally like was like you know getting like building everything up you know and everybody did amazing mm -hmm. that night too it was yep. great seeing Gutter yep. Kings it was great seeing yep. Moose like, Nikki Rage yep. they all killed it so it was really a really great night but Midnight Tea though but well, yeah, yeah I, there's, there's, there's some songs I was really looking for he played like three out of the four I was looking for so after he was done I literally started walking around I was like I'm all over in pain. <laughs> so I'm up, I'm up front for Zach, and I'm sitting there dancing, and I'm like holding onto the rail. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> at least you were there, though. Oh yeah, you were dedicated. It was at 2 a.m. when you went on too, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like 2:15 in the morning. Yeah, oh, such a rough time slot, dude. <laughs> dude, it was. I mean, it was late. You did so good. Oh, so so good. How do you feel about it? Do you feel like you did good? I think I think I did great. The only um, thing about it was. Uh, so Midnight T faded out, and he had dub echo on on the CDJs on like one of the channels, the channel that I was playing into with my controller. <laughs> okay. So for the first like three or four songs, there was some like ringing in my ear, and it didn't sound right, and I I was able to turn that off. But I'm like, fuck. It didn't uh, sound crazy. It didn't like sound bad on the first three songs. Like actually like playing. Mm -hmm. So that's like because that's that's the key. It's good that you said that out loud because like from a like viewer perspective where I was at, like even because I was standing on the rail, like. Yeah. All of your because you first like five songs I think you played were like all like some of your heaviest songs that I've yeah. heard too and you the transition was a really good choice in my opinion because it was still like you know midnight all of his songs are just it was, they were all yeah. just like yeah. insane so being able to transition to that and then going into some things that were just more like you know uh, atmosphere friendly like where it's just more you know playing some of your songs mm -hmm. that aren't like. I mean, even playing like Goosebumps or something that just bang, but aren't like yeah. they're not so, like well, they're not so intricate. Like you know, they don't have like a like bazillion pieces in it. I feel like all of his songs have like endless amounts of samples, like shards in them. I could not imagine looking at a sheet of his from one of his songs. Yeah. Like on, on yeah. Ableton, that'd be insane. Oh my god, mm -hmm. it was fun though. Good experience, and I I feel good about it. I feel good. I want to yeah. see. I want to not only see you play more, but I want to hear more of mu your music, dude. Because you're insane. Thank you. <laughs> you there's there's two. I was talking to Pat, uh, Patrick about this beforehand, but there's Jeff Updike, uh, Straylight, which is now Dybbuk, mm -hmm. but he's like he's 
like really close friends now with Kill the Noise. I think like, he's like yeah, he's his moderator right. for his fan page and his uh, Reddit page. Like yeah, he's a moderator like, for his Discord too. He's he was featured on a mixtape that Kill the Noise put out. Oh, that's like tight. Yeah, yeah, but him and you, you guys are like insane. Like, <laughs> Thank you. Even your um your I can't stop uh, remix that you were doing. Mm-hmm. Thank Dude, you. <laughs> that video. But I, I want to hear more of your stuff, man. Yeah, so, and I feel like I have seen you play. I just at that time when like you know while you were playing, I think like Carm was open though, that yeah. at that point in time, I don't remember a ton of that. Like, <laughs> no, I I don't blame you. <laughs> I was I was in there. Yeah, I thought you were fine. I mean, that's kind of a good thing. It means you were yeah. into it. <laughs> oh like, yeah, no, yeah. So I was at every, I was literally going to four or five shows a week between here and Kansas City. So I'd go to all the local shows and then every show like you know because I I would get into every promo team pretty much for yeah, high tech so true. i'd be there's two shows a week you know either in lincoln or in kansas city where we're driving to so mm-hmm. and that was my job technically so <laughs> that feels so stressful just driving back and forth between kansas city and here oh yeah God. it was we had to take turns we had it was a homie in town that got me into it so it was me him and his friend that he lives with so it was three of us that we'd take turns driving down there so oh my God. <laughs> Dude, I gotta hear more. I, I need, I need more that goes down in my life. I'm telling you that. I really struggle with coming up with concepts. So something that I've recently been doing is just like flipping, been... flipping Street. like different songs because I think yeah. that's kind of cool. Like it can get people really hype. So I've yes. been looking through like classic, well not classic, you know, like older dubstep or just like really popular songs that people would play mm-hmm. uh, during like early 2010s and whatever. And flipping those to kind of like a more modern sound. Like I did a Skrillex flip thing that I posted. I don't know if you saw that. I did not, no. Yeah, it was just like a little private sound called Link. Because again, the copyright thing is the other big problem. Yeah. Mm. It's like I try and post it and they're like, um, that's someone else's song. And it's yeah. like, yeah, I'm not making money off of it though. <laughs> like, yeah, like why do you care? It. It's, it's just an edit. It's like I'm not like trying to, you know, main, like gain anything from this song specifically. It's just right. I'm paying you know odes to a big artist that i respect exactly so it's like that's another hard avenue so you have to do like original stuff Mm -hmm. but you know i i want to lean more in towards the heavy stuff just because i think that's what people really like yeah at least like in live setting for the most part i'd say so Mm -hmm. i'd say it's interesting to see the transition since i've been in the scene it's been damn almost five years now and uh when i got in it was rhythm was huge like everybody just was like eating rhythm up in town like it was candy. Like, that was just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was what everybody wanted. And it's kind of transitioned more into just really heavy dub, where it's not mm-hmm. necessarily as, like, isolated BPMs. It was It's more, you know, anything that's going to rip whatever venue that we have <laughs> left apart, like, yeah. they're going to do it. Yeah. But on venue, you know, I just had this remember, aren't they redoing Sokol? They are. Yeah. Aren't they rebuilding that? So, I mean, that's, I'm sure that's something that – Hopefully the EDM art or EDM you know companies are going to be reaching out to you know with them because I know that I think it's a hip hop company that's redoing mm-hmm. the venue. Mm-hmm. But if they're reinforcing the building and do, you know some new sound system, whatever, like Sokol was still holding up the EDM. They they had snails there and yeah. that was intense. <laughs> like Son Holo went there too. Mm-hmm. I saw Blue October there. That was my last concert at Sokol. Yeah, my last one I think was San Holo, but like right before that, Snails came and I I'm, let me tell you what he had those three D projection projection <laughs> screens where they like l- lay drop down in front of him and there was like giant like aliens fighting giant robots like yep. in front of him and he's just sitting there sl- just like destroying this building and there's just like giant like things like ten times as tall as him just like <laughs> fighting on screens and I'm just sitting there like. Yo, this can't be real. Like, <laughs> like I've never seen anything like this in my life. Like I've seen some sick lasers, like, mm-hmm. but this is next level. Like That's this so is like tight. watching a movie, but <laughs> it looks real. Yeah. That's so tight. That is tight. Dude, I want um I want So Cool Underground to come back. Mm-hmm. Because that Did you see that they were like talking about doing uh Strangeland again? They are. Old school? They are. They're doing uh one day Strangeland. When is that? Did they've already announced it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's July or June thirtieth. I think July, but I need to talk to Ryan Co. because I'm gonna play. If I play talk a strange reunion there's day, a, there's, a, I, there's several people that we could talk to. Yeah, I, I want it. Um, is there anything uh, you have coming up, or anything, Question any projects you're working on that you want to tease? Anything like that? Just little singles here and there. Working on uh, nice. Just lots of variety of stuff. Like I said, I want to make more heavy stuff just so I can play that live. Yeah. Because right now, I, like you know, mm-hmm. I just have more melodic, feature-based kind of stuff. That's what I liked 
to make. I mean, mm-hmm. it's and that still hits in town. That's not like yeah. we have a lot of Psytrance artists and a lot of like you know more. It's I want to say experimental, but more things that aren't necessarily just the niche in town. You know, because yeah. I mean, I feel like based up step is of like top three in any town that's really proficient in EBM right now. Like that's exactly. just it's kind of like the United States push right now is just deep dub. Like that's just yeah. what everybody wants. Or, so yeah. expect more of that kind of stuff. Hopefully, so, hopefully soon. <laughs> you know, I got some ideas. I'll some give you a so. follow. Oh, for sure. It'll be awesome. <clears throat> yeah. Echoes down, everyone. Uh, it's spelled normally, except it's, there's a three for the E, right? And a Z. Yeah. Yep. Because I like to make things hard. It's <laughs> yeah. good shit, dude. It's spice up life. You can't make everything easy. Mm, yep. What I was your... Go ahead. Yeah, no, what were you going to say? I was like, I was just going to say, I promise if you look it up, I'm the only one there because it's so out of nowhere. True. <laughs> so, That's solid. Um, right what the, uh, what right made you choose that name? <laughs> so it's a stupid story because I... When I was like... 12 i played lots of halo mm-hmm. so and i wanted to come up with like a cool gamer tag when i finally got my own xbox and started playing halo on my own and that's what i came up with there wasn't really like an inspiration or anything for it that's just what i came up with because i thought it was like oh it's so cool and edgy so now i've just had to like stay true to 12 year old me mm-hmm. being like you chose this path <laughs> so yeah. we're going with it yep. so that's literally it. it's just staying true to 12 year old me who thought was the coolest thing in the world oh, and that's, that's actually well. a great story to be that's completely honest you like knowing yeah. that like you know you chose your name based off of something that you like have tied deeply into you that's just like well this is going to be part of me forever so i guess that you know we're running with it now right yeah, so that's how that's how it came up. Super basic story, but you know it's sentimental in a way because yeah. it was like oh, I remember playing Halo. Hell yeah! <laughs> it's honestly Back you'd be surprised how many artists like have at least some kind of a sentimental tie to their name. Where everybody's like, "Oh, that's a really cool name." Like, where'd you, where'd you get from? It's like, "Well, you'll never believe this." Like yeah. when I was like six, or when I was like <laughs> you know this age, I got this nickname or this name nickname for this reason. It's you know interesting because most of the time when you look at those names, you'd never guess that. Oh. Mm-hmm. Never. Well, it's like. Um, when Mario came on the podcast, that's what I was just thinking. And of he too. his his mom his mom's nickname for him growing up was Moose, so now he's he's Moose. That's awesome, right? Yeah, I he's, love he's like such that. a cool dude. <laughs> Everybody's so wholesome, especially all the artists. Like, yeah, so kind. Yeah, the, the, the support that is shown between artists in this scene is really really awesome. Like mm-hmm. everybody is, shows such, like you know, heavy support towards anybody, no matter what's going on with them. They just you know. First thing they say is, you know, hey, good good job, you know, mm-hmm. hugs, all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because I think if, if one person succeeds, if any of us succeed, then, like, we all can, like, be proud of that. And, you know, I think we all really relish in each other's, like, accomplishments because we have done a lot, you know? We mm-hmm. play cool shows. We play with big artists. It's awesome to see. And it's like, that's, that's like, our scene. That's our people. <laughs> like, yeah, and it's so cool. And that's it's true. awesome to see people just kill it at shows because everyone does. I don't think... Anyone, at least that I've personally seen or known, mm-hmm. does bad at shows like ever. It's yeah. all like awesome in their own unique music and stuff. It's it's so great. I love seeing it. Fuck yeah! If only, <laughs> so, it's if, so only um, if only like as we were talking about, if only there was more of a spotlight on Nebraska. Like if only yeah. we, but it's yeah. hard to get. Like I said, if we had at some point where everybody could just compile together money to get one venue where we just really get it set up like amphitheater style like where it's like you know old music hall like mm-hmm. they have cause like that's what the uptown and midland have such a vibe to them because they have that old you know like i'm going to the orchestra or like like something yeah. that's so like not what i'm used to going to like it's not like any building i ever go inside of and then you get this insanely loud music with these crazy lights and you're just yeah, like dude it's a place you want to get lost in you know like mm-hmm. that's what music does for me and I know it does for a lot of the people that I go to shows with and yep. having such a beautiful like ambiance to the building like just adds to it that much more dude hear exactly. me out we need an off brand Red Rocks we can just make <laughs> can, it ourselves <laughs> it's, 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 outdoor venues are hard here because of the weather like mm-hmm. you're it's even in Colorado you have more predictable weather than we do here because of the mountains but any like it, yeah. it really is just like establishing a space where we could build a building and like uh, structurally make it strong enough to hold sound that we want and not like disturb the people around because that's a big thing too is the sound ordinance this town is a lot different because of how slow we are at at pace with everything than everywhere else yep so it'd be a lot of soundproofing too i'm sure Mm -hmm. but a new building would be be you know probably more soundproof than any of the other venues around so we could get 
a crazy amount of good shows if there was some something as big as a new, you know. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the internet's kind of nice for having like gross stuff, you know, like it, to I an mean, extent. True. Like, it, well, I mean, it's only evolutionary to like the scene and everything. It's yeah. I mean, not that it, you know, it's it's almost too evolutionary at this point where everybody's on there, so you yeah. can't get your word out anymore because it was like, oh, only these people that are like really trying are going to be on the internet getting stuff out. But now it's like literally five year olds are on the internet <laughs> on their iPhones. So yeah, true. It, it's hard. It's hard to grow. Like it especially in the music scene. You know? I've 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 had like there's there's definitely been times where I've been like, what am I doing this for? Like am I do I think I'm actually gonna grow? And then I'm like, I just need to keep doing it. Yeah. Like if I, if you just keep doing it and you keep pushing yourself and you keep pushing what you can do, like the growth will eventually come in some way. Mm-hmm. Even if it's like one person liking your stuff, it's you're still growing. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I agree with that. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> you gotta do you gotta do what you want, and you can't get caught up in thinking you won't get anything from it. Well, mm. people really enjoy like, especially right now when everybody's struggling to find their own personal growth, and while everything is so restricted, like seeing someone else be so focused on growing themselves, like in be, having that like self dedication <laughs> to themselves, like is really inspiring to a lot of people because it's hard to find that in yourself right now. You know, mm-hmm. like if you're not doing something that like everybody's like shouting, shouting you, you know, on for, like it's really hard to just tell yourself to do something because there's so many things that aren't normal right now yeah. still. But when you find the motivation and do it anyways, especially in a thing where everybody's watching you, yep. like everybody really, really sees that. Cause that, as much as that people don't like talking about it, that's, it's there, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, that's something for me too. Like I, when I see artists making songs or when I'm around anybody that I know that makes music, seeing them sit down for four, five, six hours and like work on five to six frames of a song, I'm just like, yo, that's like, I can't imagine doing that. Like I've tried and learned little bits of things. And I'm like, yo, this, the amount of time you have to put into this is yep. like almost insurmountable. Like you almost can't keep track of it. Yeah. it's a lot. How much, how much, uh, how much time do you feel like you put into your tracks? Um, recently it's been a lot less because I'm kind of getting to that point where I just need to accept things and realize that like I can't nitpick every little thing mm-hmm. and lots of people aren't going to notice it anyways mm-hmm. and like you I'm ah ugh, sorry I know you've experienced this like you listen to a track <clears throat> so much that it just kind of like stops sounding like anything yeah. and you're just like uh, and you can't really like comprehend it anymore, and so it sounds completely different to you than it does to everyone else. Mm-hmm. So I'll spend like a few days on something. I get really, you know, in and out of songs yeah. a lot, or come back to different songs. It all mm-hmm. just depends. But like the last song I put out, I worked on it really hard for like a week when I was in LA, and then fuck yeah, I got it all mastered, whatever. Listened to it a few times, fixed like minor little bugs, and then just put it out. Because it was like, it just needs to go out. I need to stop touching it. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise it's going to just be worse or something's going to change and it's going to be wrong. So that's something I've had to learn. No, that's that's really beneficial. I I think that's interesting that you mentioned that too because I would imagine that with those kind of things being said where you like can't have your same understanding of your own song after being beat to death with it for hours and hours and hours, like the after release that having so many fresh ears listen to it or having other people's opinions or seeing oh, this many people liked it or this many people kept listening to it. Like, yeah. it gives you that perspective that you need without having to keep looking at it. Exactly. So we're like, oh, if I want to tweak this or that, like, you know, you can go back to it later after everything else is, but, you know, all of mm-hmm. your, you know, criticism has been met from everyone else. Yeah. And, and or, you know, put that back into your next song or even into remaking the song or doing, like, you know, mm-hmm. VIPs or edits or things yeah. like that. Exactly. And there's, you know, I've been doing it for long enough to where I kind of just, like, trust myself in that kind of process you know especially early on it was really hard for me to just like trust or like remember that I know what I was doing Mm -hmm. because I feel like I didn't know what I was doing because you like look at other artists and you're like oh they do it like a different way or they do it this way or like why am I not using this plugin or whatever but once you get over that whole idea and realize that like it's just your music then it becomes so much easier to just put stuff out and be like creative in that way that's very insightful yeah. and really, really <laughs> helpful too. Cause yeah, I, 
without Drew or Reese being here. He's I'm so like, hypercritical because he doesn't feel like mm-hmm. he has anybody to like double check. Like it's almost just yeah. like having fre- the fresh eyes there, like without having to like you know send it to someone else or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you could just be like, hey, yeah, you're here. Can you just like listen to this for me while I'm deaf to what I've been doing? Yeah, and even like having Drew here, like he he and I made Goosebump in a week, and we got the entire inspiration from like fucking geese attacking, but also we were drinking cider. So literally the pre-drop vocal is, Cider gets me goosey. And then, yeah, that's it. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> that, was the, that was the glacial till kick we were having, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. yeah, we drank so much cider, but we just got to sit down for a week, and it was great. But now not having that, like, other half of producing, I'm like, is this good? Is, mm. this, is this music? Yeah. But that's part of growth. I got to well, I mean, trust. Yeah, first of all, you just need to trust yourself like you've been doing it for long enough you i can imagine you know to a very high degree what you're doing and like that it's correct uh the other thing is if you ever have like problems you can feel free to like reach out to me or probably any other artist like and we'd be happy to help like if you wanted me to come over anytime and you're like hey i want to work on a track i would come over i'm dude. not doing anything <laughs> so <laughs> i was just letting you know like because i get that as well it's hard to do it alone yeah no i appreciate that and we should totally collab sometime yeah. i think that'd be fun for sure. I exactly. think that'd be very fun. What I want to tell you right now is he is not the first artist on this podcast that has said this to you, and you need to just do it. Just reach out to the homies mm-hmm. and talk to them, because guess what? Every time we see them at shows, they're they're the nicest people to True. you and everyone else. They are Everybody is so nice. That there's no reason that you should be afraid. I understand like the anxiousness of it, for sure. Oh, yeah. Like It's so normal to be anxious about something as, you know, as intensive and time-consuming as music, but like that's why like our community is so tight is because everybody loves to lift each other up like mm, true and but i get that anxiety like because i feel the same way like i look at a message and i'm like uh like what do i say am i sounding weird yeah no, <laughs> they dude. offered but did they really offer and it's like yeah like i really did you offer sound, like yeah, if you, you want like me to come over whenever mm-hmm. you just let me know we can make it work we can do whatever you want like yeah we'll do some, some I'm, fun things yeah and that's, again, how a lot of artists, I feel. Like yeah. you said, everyone's mm-hmm. super nice and tight-knit, and they're yeah. super kind. <laughs> yeah, so that's why there's, that's why I feel like that's why everybody's so nice about it, too, is because they feel the same way. Like, mm-hmm. when they're, like, when they're reaching out to anybody else, even, like, when Jeff talked about, like, you know, when uh, Dybbuk was here talking about reaching out to some of the artists the first time he actually, you know, had to, he was terrified. Like, you know, reaching out to someone like Kill the Noise, like, for the first time, like, that is not something, you, you know, that would be really, like, you know, non-nerve-wracking. <clears throat> yeah. So he did it and just was, you know, like, put himself out there and got himself way farther than I'm sure he ever expected he would have, mm-hmm. you know, just by saying something. So it's like, literally, it's words are powerful. That's all I want to say. Yeah. Is yep. it, never forget how powerful just <laughs> speaking up is. Yeah, true. Jeff is goaded and scrouted. He's, he's fucking god. He's, 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 Jeff. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Jeff. He is, he is in there. Yeah, he, he do be in there. Well, mm-hmm. guys, I think this was incredible. It was great talking great to you. Time. Well, um, is there any anything out. else you want to talk about or mention? No, I'm pretty good. I think I mentioned everything. I'm all good. Fuck yeah, you. I'm having a great, <laughs> had a great uh, yeah. time. Thank is, you for having me. Um, <laughs> is there a release date for Killer yet? Tentative? Not yet. I, I can't say. Uh, I, okay. I know the release date, but yeah. I'm cool. just, I have to wait until they get out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unreleased release date. So yeah, like we gotcha. stay got tuned. Email. Yeah, stay Keep tuned. Keep your eyes open. Stay tuned. See me in a movie. <laughs> yes, being racist yes. apparently. Perfect. Just plain, lightly racist. It's not. It's like. Yeah, just a bit of racism. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not old timey racism, probably. It's more but, modern day, like you yeah. know, uncomfortable, like closet racism. But <laughs> yeah. well, I'm not like that in real life. I promise. Oh, it was yeah. just such an uncomfortable question. <laughs> but, yeah. Wow! Thank you again, Patrick, for being on as the thank guest co-host. We appreciate it. Woo-hoo. Good. It's great cheeking with you. Um, thank you again, Mason. Uh, follow him. Echoes down with a three and a Z. Um, you can figure out where those are in the name. Yeah. Yeah. It's not terribly hard. You can no. figure it out. Yeah, that <laughs> is down. Yeah, um, just throw the link in the... Yeah, I'll um, put the link down below. Um, but thank you again. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you to anybody watching this. Uh, and thank you, guys. It was yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks, All guys. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great night. Hell and we're yeah, done. We all hate each other. <laughs> Fuck you, guys. <got> no. <laughs> like, just complete one.